Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join me in the words attributed to St. Patrick. I bind unto myself today the strong name of the Trinity, my invocation of the saint, the three in one and the one in three. I bind unto myself today the virtues of the star of heaven, the glorious sun's light giving ray, the whiteness of the moon.
Let us pray Canticle 13 together. The Canticle is printed in page 3 of the Bulletin Insert. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. Glory to you, praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and God and exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and God and exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths. In the high wall of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and God and exalt you forever. In our second reading, Paul urges us to live by God's Holy Spirit and to overcome fears by this reliance on God. Paul uses the term Abba for God. This is literally translated Daddy, a reading from Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you do not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There is a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, We know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can one be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him may not perish, but may have everlasting life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. The 
gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Come, Lord, help us to focus on your word for us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I really love mysteries. Do any of you mystery novels? My favorites lately are those by a Canadian author, a woman named Penny. Louise Penny. I know at least Diane Burrell and Irene Alexander share, me, share with me this love of those novels by Louise Penny. And I wait for the arrival of her next novel, wait for it, actually two of them, do it about the same time. One of them will be a continuation of her series about this homicide investigator. And the other is going to be a novel that she co-wrote with her friend uh, about murder in the White House. And she wrote it with Hillary Clinton. I just love mysteries. And Fred Beekner is a wonderful Presbyterian writer. And I think he has a key as to why so many of us like mystery novels. He wrote a book which he calls Wishful Thinking of a Seeker's ABC. And in that book he said this, there are mysteries which you can solve by taking thought. For instance, a murder mystery whose mysterious might be dispelled in order that the truth might be known. You know the issue. In the board game, it's did the butler do it or did Colonel Mustard do it in a pipe? We can solve these mysteries and they intrigue us. And I like to think that what we have when we do that is mastery over mystery. Mastery over mystery. We can solve it. We can do it. Either the investigator in that novel solves it, or we do, as we guess about who did it. <clears throat> when I say mastery over mystery, it might sound like I'm playing with words, and indeed I am. Because Beekner goes on to explain more of what I'm getting out with, mastery and mystery, when he says this. There are other mysteries which do not conceal a truth to think about and think your way through, but whose truth is in the mystery Itself. That is, you live the mystery. You see what Peter is saying? He's saying that those mystery novels are things that we like to master, get mastery over the mystery. As I said, either a key character solves the mystery, or we do. But there are other mysteries that actually contain the truth in themselves. What might want some of those be? Well, one of them is what we will do shortly in this service. We will receive the Holy Communion. And somehow, someway, we say the presence of Jesus the Christ comes to us in those elements, in this case, the one element that we'll receive of the Holy Communion, the body of Christ. And we say that that happens somehow, but no matter how hard I try to figure out how that happens, I can't explain it. 
There have been explanations of this, theories about how it happens. Some say it's something called transubstantiation, that the actual bread and wine, though they still seem to our appearance and touch and taste to be bread and wine, are actually transubstantiated. They're changed into the body of Christ. Lutherans talk about something called consubstantiation, that somehow the presence of Christ comes alongside those elements of bread and wine. Orthodox say it's a mystery, a holy mystery. And I don't know how else to explain it other than saying it's a mystery. But the one thing that I do know is that the presence of Jesus Christ comes to me and to you in the elements of the Holy Communion. Comes to us to strengthen and renew our life over and <coughs> over and over again. And that's the truth that's in the Eucharist, the Holy Communion. And yet I can't ever solve it. I can't explain it. Another one of the mysteries like that is the one we celebrate this day, the Holy Trinity. All around the church today, there are preachers who will be preaching about the Trinity. Many will try to explain it, and there'll be many heresies committed this day, <laughs> over and over again, in church after church. I'm not going to try to explain it. There was a man in the 4th century with a strange name, Eunomius, and he thought that he could understand and explain this mystery. And in the readings in church history, we read some of Eunomius's words. He said this, I know God in the same manner that God knows himself. God does not know about his own nature any more than we do. When I first read that years ago, I said, really? <laughs> I could agree with the Eunomius on many grounds, but this is one argument that I have with him. I don't really understand the mystery of human life. I don't really fully even understand my own life. And how then can I say, or anyone say, that I know more about God than God knows about himself, about God's self? And then all of this gets compounded when we say, as the early church said, that God is the Holy Trinity. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and yet not three gods, but one God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Some of the truest words I ever read about the Holy Trinity came from another a saint of the church, a man named Jerome, also writing in the fourth century. And in his book, The Mystery of the Trinity, Jerome said this, the true profession of the mystery of the Trinity is to own that we do not comprehend it. The true understanding of the Trinity is to own that we do not comprehend it. And I can really agree with that. It's like that presence of Jesus in the Holy Communion. I have to accept that it happens simply because I know Jesus' presence comes to me, to you, to renew my life. I believe in the Holy Spirit, not because it's in our creeds, but simply because God's Holy Spirit comes to lead and guide me. Because the promise that Jesus made, I will be with you to the end of the ages,
comes true over and over and over again in prayers in the presence of Jesus the Christ that I see in other people, people gathered here in this congregation. That though he lived 2,000 years ago, I can see his presence in brothers and sisters over and over and over again. When I look at the wonderland that God has created, the beauty that is present in the air and water and sea and beyond these immediate things around us in this cosmos of a creation that we learn more and more and more about day by day through the wonder of science, the more I can understand God's creation, the creation made by the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in this world that cannot be explained any other way than that it is by the divine creator. And so it's because of what I see that I believe in the Holy Trinity, because of what I experience and know of God's presence with us. As I said, the Orthodox Church has the best definition of the Trinity following what Jerome had to say. The Orthodox Church says this, the Holy Trinity is one of the great mysteries of our faith. And with our limited and finite minds, we can never, as Jerome said, fully comprehend it. And yet in our experience of the one living God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we experience this Trinity over and over and over again. And to that I say, thanks be to God, we do live the mystery.
work to protect us, including the police, firefighters, and emergency personnel of our community, our men and women of the armed forces, Audrey McMillan Cole, Chastain Gardner, Jessica Halliday, Brandon Hollowell, Greg, Chaz Hewlett, Micah Jones, Chris Call, Brian Casper, Amanda Woodruff, Ethan Loesch, Zach Webb, and for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those in Let us 
especially on this our parish feast day of Thanksgiving for this parish community, for all of our members, past and present and future. We will exalt you, O oh God, our King.
Our Eucharist continues with the great thanksgiving, a term that comes from the early church when this was the summation of all of the thanksgivings of God's people who are God's great gifts to us. This day I would urge us to give thanks especially for this congregation, for those who have begun this place so many years ago and all who have sustained its life that feeds us today, and for God's continuing presence with us as we break out of this pandemic and uh, offer our thanks to God for this presence of Jesus in the communion as well as all of these and many gifts to us. The Lord is with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this now fragile Earth, our island home. I will be created and have it be. From the primal elements you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood be reconciled us. Therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of heaven and heaven and earth are full of your glory. He who comes in the name of the Lord, of the Son, and the Christ. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day is coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Sarah, Ruth, Mary, and Elizabeth, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion Make us one body, one spirit in Christ, 
that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of our bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us to say our daily bread. Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let's keep the feast. Hallelujah. The gifts of God for the people of God. They are holy gifts for you, God's holy people.
Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of God and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing in the power of God's presence with us. Thanks be to God.